Okay, uh, this is a question about axial loading, a uh, concrete column reinforced with steel bars, and there's some information here about the column itself. Uh, it's got an area, cross-sectional area of 0.1 square meters. Of that cross-section, 97% is concrete and 3% is steel, and we know the Young's modulus for the steel and the concrete, and the whole thing is subjected to a compressive load of 200 kilonewtons. Um, there are uh, two things that we we need to do in these cases. The first is, I, I'll call it the load condition. Um, we want to say that the um, force supported in total, so 200 kilonewtons, is somehow balanced by a force in the concrete uh, plus a force in the steel. And that's, I mean, in a way, that's a kind of method of sections argument or something like that, that um, we can see different parts of this have to be in equilibrium, and in particular, the um, force acting downwards has to, be act has to be balanced by some forces acting upwards, and um, that is, uh, the forces acting upwards are that 200 uh, sorry, forces acting downwards are that 200 kilonewtons. Um, forces acting upwards are the resistance from the concrete and the steel, or the compression of the concrete and the steel. And that means then that we can say uh, that's the stress in the concrete multiplied by the area of the concrete plus the stress in the steel multiplied by the area of the steel. Um, and then the second thing we can do is what's called the compatibility condition. And that says the, um, the concrete and the steel move together. They're not sliding against each other. And that means that the strain in the concrete must equal the strain in the steel. Um, and that's what, when we talk about compatibility, that's what we're going to generally be talking about, that strains. So because we know, uh, just making a note of the things we're using, here we use stress is force over area. Um, here we're going to use uh, the relationship between stress and strain, which of course uses Young's modulus. Um, and I can say then that... Um, the stress in the concrete divided by the Young's modulus of concrete equals the stress in the steel divided by the Young's modulus of steel. Uh, that's substituting this definition into that compatibility condition. Um, and what I can do now is to substitute for the stress in the steel in this equation, and then we'll only have one unknown, and then we'll be able to solve. Um, so if I say the stress in the steel equals um, the Young's modulus of steel divided by the Young's modulus of concrete all multiplied by the stress in the concrete, and now I'm going to combine, uh, if I call this equation 1 and this equation 2, and I combine them, uh, I can say... Um, 200,000 equals uh, stress in the concrete multiplied by the area of the concrete. That's 97% uh, of 0 0.1, which is 0.097, plus the stress in the steel, which I'm going to substitute in uh, this, multiplied by the area of the steel, that's 3% of 0 0.1 meter, square meters, which is 0 0.03. And finally, we know the uh, Young's modulus of steel is 10 times greater than the Young's modulus of concrete. Um, so ES over E steel, just from this information up here, is going to be 10. So this is sigma C. 0 0.097 plus 10 sigma c 0 0.003 and finally that equals um, just rearranging 0 0.097 plus 10 times 0 0.003 uh, 
0.127 sigma c. And therefore, sigma c, the stress in the concrete, equals uh, 200,000 divided by 0.127, which equals, um, and that's coming out at about 1.57 times 10 to the 6, I'm going to call it 1.57 megapascals. Uh, sorry, so yes, 1.57 megapascals for the stress in the concrete. Uh, if we now move on and just look, we know um, essentially from that equation two how to calculate the stress in the steel. Stress in the steel, uh, I'll call this equation two, which tells me that the stress in the steel equals the Young's modulus in the steel over the Young's modulus in the concrete multiplied by uh, the stress in the concrete. Uh, that came out of our compatibility equation, equation, which came from the fact that the strain in the steel has to match the strain in the concrete because everything is expanding and contracting together and strain is a measure of expansion or contraction. So um, that means it is um, 200 times 10 to the 9 divided by 20 times 10 to the 9. So this is 10 uh, sigma c, and that turns out to be 15.7 megapascals. So we've got the stress in the steel and the stress in the concrete. Um, and we want to know if the length of the column is 4 meters, how much does it shorten? That's part B. Um, so for that, we want to work out the strain uh, we can use either the concrete or the steel for this calculation. The strain should be the same. So I'll, since I've got the steel information here, I'll use the steel. Um, sigma equals E epsilon. Stress is Young's modulus times strain. So therefore strain equals sigma over E, which here, uh, remembering that I'm using the steel for both, is 15.7 times 10 to the 6 divided by... Um, the Young's modulus for steel, which is 200 times 10 to the 9. Which comes out as 7.874 times 10 to the minus 5. Don't need units because it's a strain which is dimensionless. And then we can say strain is defined as the change in length divided by the original length. So the change in length is the strain times the original length. 7.874 times 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by 4 meters. Which comes out as 3.4. 1, 5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters, and that's 0 0.315 millimeters, if you prefer it in another way. So the column contracts, or shrinks, by 0 0.315 millimeters. And that's our answer. Um, so that's how you do those kind of questions on axial loading where you've got um, reinforced materials or two different kinds of materials. The important things are really to note that you're going to need two conditions. The first one is going to be how the load is balanced and it'll be supported by both materials typically. And the second one is going to be the compatibility condition which says that the strains have to match up somehow. So some kind of load condition describing the forces involved, some kind of compatibility condition describing the strains involved, and typically then you'll have enough information to um, run through, rearrange, and find out all of the relevant parts of the question.